to thank our friends at Google Earth for giving us Google Earth Pro free now. You can download that and uh, you can visit a couple places because nothing like using a free tool to take a look at some things. First, I'd like to just chat with you for a moment about a project done uh, years back called Operation Plowshare. It was the use of nuclear explosives uh, in peaceful uh, purposes. Here is the stimulation of low permeability natural gas formations. Interesting. The first of those was called Gas Buggy. And our friend Gas Buggy uh, in New Mexico uh, was 29 kiloton nuclear explosion that um, now has a campground nearby. It's kind of nice. You can see this right here. And there's a mandrel there was 4,240 feet deep, 80 feet wide, 335 foot, uh, foot high explosion uh, to stimulate natural gas. Uh, unfortunately, it uh, turned out to be a little too too toxic. Uh, nonetheless, they did, um, you can see it's summarized, the Center for Land Use and Interpretation has a gas bugly nuclear test site mandrel and some information that relates to it in terms of the Carson National Forest, um, and, and now around it in Google Earth, if, if you zoom around a little bit here, you'll see uh, the, the new pads uh, that relate to that, but that's not really the purpose of this video. I wanted to mention that to you. Uh, we also have the next in that sequence, which was Rulison. Uh, this was in um, 1969, a 43 kiloton explosion. Uh, underground to stimulate natural gas and uh, this one was deemed to have um, unacceptable for public use here you have too much uh, tritium in that uh, a little bit of a problem with Rulison test <clears throat> only uh, produced 45 or 455 million cubic feet of natural gas uh, you've got that Center for uh, Land Use and Interpretation on the Rulison site as well. <clears throat> the last of these three tests was uh, Rio Blanco, which uh, our friend Rio Blanco is up uh, north here a little bit in Colorado. Um, this was 333 kiloton, so 333 kiloton uh, nuclear explosions. And, and we can zoom out, and you can see all of the, the new sites that are around here, the new pad sites. One thing that I'd like to talk about, and I've been meaning to do this for quite some time, relates to uh, our friends in Colorado here. Back last year, we had a um, nuclear, or a uh, landslide in Colbran, Colorado. Um, you can see some information about it. It's uh, May 25th, 2014. There was a, a landslide in Colorado. We can zoom in on that. The uh, coal brand Colorado is, is right here, and the, uh, the landslide viewed from Google Earth is right here. And uh, fellow compatriot Dutch Sense uh, on um, YouTube has a video. That he, he talks in great depth with respect to the uh, video. You can see a pad right here at the toe of the... Uh, landslide. If we go back to Google Earth, you, you can see that pad right here. Um, this landslide occurred. They called it a mudslide. Dutch Sense calls it more of a, a carbon uh, uh, dioxide sequestration and a problem relating to the natural gas production we look at the distance of this, this uh, was said to be four miles long. According to Google Earth here, it looks like it's about three miles long um, by roughly, depending where you look at it, a half mile to as much as uh, three quarters of a mile wide. Interesting to see that kind of perspective relevant to some other things right next to it or not far away here is uh, Vega Reservoir. What I'd like everybody to see though is, you know, <clears throat> it's kind of interesting if I were to put and map out all of the natural gas development in this coal brand area. Uh, interestingly enough, there I, I noted 107 pad sites or, or some form of natural gas development all around this area. Now, this landslide occurred 
a distance of roughly 14 miles, 14 and a half, 15 miles from the Rulison nuclear detonation. Uh, gee, no surprise there. You got a <laughs> nuclear detonation, 107 uh, coal brand. But if I zoom out a little bit, I'd like you to just see some other things here. You know, it's kind of interesting. Glenwood Canyon uh, begins right over here. And this uh, scenic drive, the contractors that uh, did the work there were couldn't even hurt a tree. Uh, they were fined if they hurt a tree. Uh, I bet they'd be kind of surprised when they, if when I map out the various natural gas development sites in the Silt and Rifle Colorado area. Uh, I've mapped here 742 natural gas sites. Uh, you can zoom in and see each one of these pads. Um, so 742 more <laughs> in addition to the 107 down here right around the landslide area. Um, oh, and that's, that's not all by a long shot. Unfortunately, we're, we're leaving out our friends in the Parachute Dubuque area here. When I show those, <laughs> unfortunately, with the Parachute Dubuque area, I've got in excess of 1,035 sites. Um, so 1,035 plus 740 plus 107. Um, and the nuclear detonation there that had tritium in it. I find it amazing. It's hard to actually see all of this. What's crazy is, too, it's all right along the Colorado River, um, which goes right down through here, all, all next to, around, and along that scenic drive where contractors were fined for hurting a tree. All the bluffs, everything up through here, all of this. Um, and I can turn off all of the um, little placeholders that I've got here so that you don't see that. You can actually see the sites of development everywhere, spider webbed out, impoundments on the top of the mesas here. Um, Fairly significant if we can do this in an area that is, is uh, environmentally sensitive that we would have required contractors to uh, pay a fine for hurting a tree, then I, I have to say it blows my mind that we would have allowed this to take place. Now, what I'd also like to point out here is There, there's a landslide <laughs> or a lake formed that formed inside the, the uh, area of the uh, landslide. That's one thing. And um, this, according to Dutch Sense, and I have to lend some credibility to this after looking at the Colorado Climate Change Markets Act, uh, what they've done is they've used CO2 sequestration uh, in these areas uh, as a means of, I believe, re-stimulating some of these wells which um, I have to believe is likely related to our little landslide or, or not so little landslide over here. And, and what's crazy is this isn't even talked about in the media or the news. That's the most disappointing thing. We have a three-mile landslide, the, um, which began right here and came down through Natural gas pad here, <laughs> here, and 107 of them all around here. Again, there they are. So anybody that thinks there's no relationship there, uh, I, I think is, is either not being objective or deriving an income from a source that uh, does not allow objectivity. That said, just a couple other things I'd like you to see real quick while we're here uh, out in this environmentally sensitive area. This is an Encana, uh, Encana oil and gas. 
if I if I measure these impoundments, I'd just like you to see the size of these so that you have a, an understanding of how big this impoundment is 1,535 feet long. That's, that's, uh, that's something. And uh, we can't leave out our uh, Chevron friend here up in Meeker, Colorado. And I find it amazingly coincidental that these are around Here's Rio Blanco, the site of the three thirty-three kiloton uh, nuclear devices that went off in 1973. And we've got all of these pad sites around here. Hmm. Looks like some seismic activity, too. Gee, imagine that. All in these areas is really kind of... Coincidental, I have to believe, probably not.